Welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about my wine tasting party that we had here this past weekend. It was a huge success. Everybody who came enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself. Sean enjoyed himself. I wanted to give you guys some tips on putting together your own wine party um, and some of the steps that I took to plan mine and put it together successfully. For me, I have to write things down. If I don't write things down, they don't stick. I like to just use the good old fashioned notebook and pen. So I have this little notebook right here. This is my project planning notebook. So the first thing obviously you're gonna wanna do is get yourself a notebook designated specifically towards planning your party. Choose a theme. Um, it's Valentine's Day coming up really soon, so what better time to host a wine party than for Valentine's Day? So that was our theme for our wine tasting party. What I usually do is I will sit down on my iPad and I will look up lots of different ideas on Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, and I'll save them to a board and I'll, um, you know, screenshot pictures of things just so that they're easy to access on my phone. Then what I like to do is I like to create a special folder either on my phone or in my, on my laptop or iPad um, designated to that specific plan. I don't actually do handwritten invitations. Basically what we did is we created an event on Facebook and then we invited everybody that was on our Facebook um, to come to the event and we also invited some people that weren't on our Facebook um, but we did that kind of like word of mouth. Facebook is a nice way to keep all of your invites in order so you know who's coming, who is a maybe, and who can't come. That way you have a really good count of the size of your wine party. Now the to-do list is hugely important. I started out with like an overview of my wine party, kind of like all the ideas that I was thinking of first, and then I broke it down into kind of more daily um, tasks to do to complete the project. So one of the first things that you're gonna wanna consider when having a wine party is what wines that you want to have at your party. I first found out how many people were gonna attend our wine party, or a rough estimate of how many people were going to attend. One bottle of wine for every two people. Not that each person is gonna drink a half a bottle of wine, but I just wanted to make sure I had enough um, and a large enough selection for everybody's tastes that come to the party. For instance, if you have 10 guests, you're gonna want five bottles of wine. We had about 16 people that we knew were going to be here, so we chose eight different wines. You're gonna want to have an assortment of of wines because lots of people like different wines. I actually broke my selection down into three categories. I wanted to get some wines that were local to our area. I also wanted to get some domestic wines within the US, different parts of the country, and I also wanted to get a few international wines. Always remember that variety is when good. you're picking your wines, try to pick some reds, some blushes, some whites. Really do your research on the wines that you want to have at your party. Also another thing that I did when I was researching the wines was I made notes on each wine that I chose. I jotted down a brief description of each wine as well as the flavoring or notes to each wine. And I also jotted down um, pairings that other people had mentioned that they enjoyed with the wine that I was choosing. So next you're going to want to choose a menu that complements the wines that you pick. When I was choosing my menu, I wanted to have a variety of things, but I didn't want to serve like a sit down meal. I wanted to have uh, more of a buffet style with like finger foods um, and I wanted it to be kind of more interactive so that way we could all talk with each other. So I thought the best place to um, have 
the wine party was in our kitchen around our island. That way I could set up all the food on the island um, and have a good different selection of things and that way everybody could kind of rotate around the island um, and sample all the different wines with the different pairings. I also chose to do a variety of hot and cold plates. When I chose what I wanted to make for my menu, I also had to figure out how much of each item I had to make. A good rule of thumb is to consider about two portions if it's an appetizer or a tapas per person. I also wanted a variety of savory and sweet items. So this is where the wine pairings that I researched came in handy is because I knew kind of the items that went well with the wines that I had chosen. So I kind of use that as a guide. I also wanted a variety of finger foods and plated foods. So what I did was I offered small little plates for people to take so that they could hold on to a plate as they kind of made their way around our island. Um, but then there were also small little bowls positioned on the island so that way they could eat what was on their plate and they could also pick from little bowls that were placed throughout the island. The first thing that's probably going to be on your shopping list is your wines. However, I was lucky. We had almost all of the wines that we had at our wine tasting on hand. The next thing on your shopping list is going to be your menu items or the items that you're going to make to complement your wine. I broke down my menu shopping list into two different shopping trips. So the first shopping trip was items that wouldn't go bad. Hand or jarred items that are fine on the shelf like pickles and olives. Anything that wasn't going to go bad quickly, I purchased in my first shopping trip. The second shopping trip was for the items that spoil more quickly, such as fruits, vegetables, cheeses, all of those items I purchased during my second shopping trip. So in addition to your menu shopping list, you're also gonna wanna create a shopping list for any type of decor items or paper plates. Now my shopping list kind of was a running shopping list. I created it ahead of time with everything that I knew I would need for the party um, in advance. And I kind of kept a running shopping list for things that I found out that I needed as I went along planning my party. So the next step was to gather the supplies that I was going to use for display or to serve my menu items on. I definitely started with the things that I had that I knew I wanted to use as far as the color scheme that I was going with. So I had a few large wooden platters, a lot of smaller white dishes, I have some pink glassware that I used. Pulled all of those things out and separated them and kept them in a spot so that I could go to them when I actually actually did my dry setup. From there, I could figure out the other items that I needed to purchase. Anything like linens, placemats, charger dishes that you have on hand already, use those ones up first. There was very few things that I ended up purchasing as far as large serving pieces because I do have a lot already. So use what you have. Check out the dollar stores, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, um, just a buck. They have a lot of really nice serving pieces for a very inexpensive price. And you can often find seasonal themed items like Valentine's Day dishes and bowls and plates that you can use in your food display. So I have everything laid out on my um, island in my kitchen. I'm trying to figure out what's gonna go where, but let's show you the things that I purchased and where I got them from. Um, I took a run to Hobby Lobby, and from Hobby Lobby, I found these gorgeous blush pink charger plates. They were $1.99. I bought two of them. I like the size of the charger plate, and I also like the fact that I'm, I'm probably gonna write on the charger plate, so I like the fact that it was pretty inexpensive. I also found from Hobby Lobby these gorgeous blush pink dishes that have a gold finish to them. These were on the 75% off clearance rack. They were $2.99 each. They only had two. If they had more, I would have bought more of them, but um, I love the color. Then I bought these. Um, there are two pack of silver and gold paint markers, and I'm gonna use these to write on um, my charger plates and on my little cards that are gonna explain all of the different little 
tapas and wines and pairings and the different types of cheeses. From Target, um, I bought these gorgeous pink peony and rose um, candles. Um, you know what? I think these were on sale for $5.99. Um, I loved the color. I thought it was gorgeous. Um, I loved the little gold tops. I have candle holders in my family room over here that um, these are gonna look really pretty in. So I bought two of those. I also bought two packs of these Spritz food picks. Now these are gonna go in like my meats and cheese platter area to kind of um, just tell everybody what meats and cheeses are on display. I bought from the Target dollar spot, these are a chalkboard. It's a pink chalkboard. They were $3 each, I bought four of them. I'm gonna use these to display the wines. So I'm gonna do probably two or three wines on each heart and I'll write out the wine and I'll write out what it's gonna be paired well with. Um, and then these are gonna be displayed around the island. There's a couple more. These actually came from the Target dollar spot. Again, I loved the color. I'm gonna do some like votives kind of all spread out in between all of like the food and wine. This one is honeysuckle petal. It's very light scented. These were $3 each, so I bought the two that they had. These are on clearance. These are just another small glass votive. It's just a white votive. There's no scent to these. They were on sale for $4.14 from Target. I did also buy a few extra um, plates. These came from Target. They were a dollar a piece, and I think there's 10. Um, yeah, there's 10 in each one. They're like the appetizer size. I had bought two packages of these from um, the Just a Buck store prior but I wanted to make sure I had enough plates since we're gonna have about 18 people here I wanted to have at least um, two plates per person because sometimes you know you take a plate you throw it away I do have a couple packs of napkins I opened one up that's in my bar cart already these gorgeous trays and platters came from um, Tuesday morning it was $12.99 it is stunning Stunning. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to display in it, but I love the gold. I love the little sparkles around the edge. I love the little feet on the front. Um, totally the style I'm going for. This little, um, it's like a, it's actually a little cake dome. Um, this bottom portion right here was silver. And I went ahead and did my gold, liquid gold leafing on it because I wanted it to be gold to match. And then I'm just going to put a little napkin on it. And if I place some like cookies or something in there, um, I thought that was adorable. This one also came from Tuesday morning. I, all of these came from Tuesday morning. I think this was like $10 from Tuesday morning. And then this one was on clearance because it was supposed to be a cake stand, but the cake stand, the stand portion had broke. So they were just selling it as like the platter and I think I paid like $3 for it. Your next step is going to be to produce a dry setup of where you're going to be putting all of your food and your wine arrangement. You're going to want to determine where in your home you're going to want to host your party. I know for us, like I mentioned, our island was perfect because there's a lot of space in our kitchen and in our family room and people can kind of walk around and chit chat and sit down. I'm going to give you just a quick little overview. I'm starting to set up my um, center island here with all of my wines and I'm trying to decide where I'm placing all of the different appetizers and cheese and fruit and everything that we have to go with the wine. I'm using these large like chalkboard hearts that I got from the Target dollar spot and I used my little gold paint pen to kind of just do a description of each wine um, and different items that pair well with each wine and I did four on this little elevated wooden stand and then I have an elevated cutting board that I put over here and I did four over there. Just kind of scattered multiple colored hearts all around the rest of the open um, stone on my um, island. Put some hot tapas kind of in the front. Oh, I'm kind of just trying to figure out where I want to put like the larger plates and then I'll take the smaller things and kind of put them in between all of the other like larger dishes. So when you're doing your dry setup or your dry run for your party, um, a good thing to consider is um, setting up your items in layers. What I wanted to do is I wanted to create a higher layer in the center of that square to display all of our wines on. Then what I did was I created 
multiple lower layers by using smaller cutting boards, smaller charger plates, um, cake stand, anything that gave multiple layers. I also wanted to make sure that I added in some candles, some decor items, all of those I had on hand with the exception of the candles. I did my dry run or my dry setup about a day in advance. That way I could get everything kind of where I wanted it. I needed to go purchase anything. I had time to run out to the store to get things that I Another needed. thing that I did was I laid out all of the cheeses that I was having because I had quite a few different cheeses and quite a few of them paired well with specific wines. So I wanted to make sure that I laid those out close to the wines that they were paired with. So once I got all of my cheeses laid out, I didn't open them up, I didn't take them out of the wrappers, I just kind of placed them um, around, moved things around, um, just basically placed them in the vicinity that I wanted them. Once they were there, I went ahead and made these really cute little cheese and labels. I placed the label where the cheese was and then I picked the cheese up and put it back in the I did that. So so it would make it much easier to set up come time for the real party. Another thing that I did was once I had everything where I wanted it, I used my phone and snapped some pictures so that way I would remember where everything was just in case something got bumped, something got put away. Um, I wanted to know that I could just go to my phone, flip through my pictures and say, okay, that is where that went. Okay, so it's wine tasting party day. You're gonna wanna start your wine tasting setup as far in advance that day as possible. Our party was at 6.30 p.m. and I still had a few things that I wanted to run and pick up from the store in the morning. So I didn't start officially prepping everything until about two o'clock in the afternoon, which gave me just about four hours. First of all, what I did was I laid out all of my room temperature items, crackers, breads, anything that was fine at room temperature, I plated it or I put it in the bowl, covered it with saran wrap and laid it out where it was supposed to go. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is either chill wines that need to be chilled or decanter them. I did have a few red wines that needed to be decantered, so I made sure that I opened them up, poured them in the decanter and let them sit in the air for a couple hours before our party. Now was the time I started to prep all of my hot entrees or items that needed to be cooked. I wanted to prepare stuff just to the point where it didn't quite have to go into the oven yet, but that it was all ready to go. One of the recipes I made was a Grecian party square. So I made the filling for the party square first, um, left that in a bowl covered in our refrigerator, so that way come time to actually put it together and put it in the oven, it was all pre-done. Now we also did, like I'd mentioned previously, a sweet, and spicy bacon wrapped chicken, which is my favorite. We've made them at quite a few parties. They are such an easy and really delicious little finger food appetizer. We cut up the chicken ahead of time earlier that day. We marinated it in the seasonings in a Ziploc baggie in our refrigerator um, and we pre-cut the bacon so that way it was all ready to put together just before we put it in the oven. Then what you're gonna wanna do is open up all of your cheeses, cut all of your cheese. I didn't wanna cut the full thing of each cheese, so I basically cut each cheese in half, and stuck this in the portion of the cheese that wasn't cut, and then I either cubed or sliced the remainder of that cheese. So that way, not all of the cheese was sitting out to get hard. Then after that, I plated all of my cold dishes or all of my cold tapas or cold food items. Anything that was in the refrigerator that needed to be plated, now's the time. Just before my items went into the oven, I plated everything, I kept everything saran wrap. And then lastly, I put all my recipes in the oven that um, needed to be cooked. I made sure all of those went in the oven timely so that way they would be done as guests were starting to arrive. Quickly, I just made sure that everything was cleaned up, stuff that was in the sink was thrown in the dishwasher, and now it was just time to enjoy ourselves and enjoy our wine party. So I hope all of these tips were helpful for you guys for hosting your own wine party. Take a look at some of the pictures from our party. Thank you.